So this is yet another talk about Fedora Risk Five. I'm David Abdurrahmanov, or you can also find me on IRC and Matrix as David LT. So Fedora Risk Five, eight years. So Risk Five in general is about twelve years old. We've been building Fedora Risk Five for the last eight years. Richard, our own Richard started the, the whole booster process, and then I joined very, very much quickly into this. Um, we did a bunch of things. We had multiple card iterations. Uh, we had multiple demos of NAS. We had the whole thing of uh, GNOME desktop system running, RISC five PC systems. Um, and today we're going to talk mostly about Fedora 40, 41, Central Stream 10, and a few things more about. So Fedora 40, um, it's an important milestone for us. You know, CentOS Stream 10 is basically based on Fedora 40. So we have our last image is based on Fedora 48, and then we skip Fedora 49 to focus on Fedora 40. Uh, part of that is that you know, build capacity, you know, what we have, it takes time. Um, it's not fully vanilla Fedora. We have modified packages, about 230 right now. What that means is that we have changes that are not upstream or not upstream the disk git. So we expect changes or some patches that you're pulling in from upstream. Um, that still needs to be resolved. Um, but uh, the more interesting thing is that we're changing our kernel. It's now UFI one, and it's also EFI Z boot kernel, which means it depends on UFI. Um, because there is file like an x86, it, does, it cannot uncompress itself. It needs the help from a firmware to uncompress the kernel. That means you need a ADK2 or UBIT firmware to boot. Um, another thing is now we're kind of switching to the Kiwi to generate container images. So that's a minimal standard toolbox. Um, and also to generate cloud images. So we have two ways to generate images. We still use the old deprecated, like seven years deprecated appliance tools. There's a Kickstarter to do that. And we also now have a Kiwi, which we can almost generate the vanilla uh, cloud generic Yuki UFI image and boot that with libvirt. Um, and you can also use the cloud in it to configure the whole thing. Um, what we lose by doing that is a boot stack. So old stuff, including Fedora 58, that boots the XT Linux, U-boot, you know, old stuff like RMV7, AR64 at the beginning. Um, because we don't have a shim support, there is a patch set pull request for a very long time. It's still not merged. And we need to move to a new Grub version so we can actually have a Linux loader on it. That's probably going to happen for Fedora 41, hopefully. But at this stage, you know, whatever Fedora 40 image we have, it doesn't put on the physical hardware, which is a bit problematic because our Kaji is based fully on hardware. So all the builds we do for Fedora 48, 40, 41 do not use KMU. That's all on the physical hardware, which is mainly sci-fi unmatched boards. And at some point, hopefully, we have two, and there is one uh, Milk 5 Pioneer board. So 41, um, so we already started. We are probably up to 2,000 packages in. Um, the last time I checked the Delta was about 6,000 packages, but the whole Python 3.13 happened. Um, the biggest problem for us is probably to minimize the changes that we have in our disk gate. So everything has to go in before we could even consider to become a primary architecture. Um, so again, we don't have physical hardware images. That's a bit of a problem, but hopefully this whole grub lining. We don't exactly need shim, but you do need grub uh, to put on the physical hardware that you can bring back with disk images. Um, and another thing, so the whole server specs are happening. Um, we're still not finished, we're not ratified. Um, but things like UFI, ACPI, SMBIOS, so basically a standard boring system is approaching. It could happen for Fedora 41, it could not, we don't know, but we'll try and enable that. There's also gonna be a fourth iteration of Kaji, um, which is gonna talk more about it a bit later. So what's the future hardware? Um, so this is, What's coming next, or we know potentially might be announced in the second half of this year, or like early 2025. Um, so we have a banana pie. Um, it's already available. I think it's about $100 or something like that. It's a new company, Supermeet K1, new course, not fully tested. Highly interesting board, not for performance reasons, but it's the first board that's probably RV22, which is the RISC-V profile. It has a bunch of extensions. We don't know exactly a full list, 
uh, people are discovering instructions and then figuring out the, the extensions versus the official documentation, which is also changing. Um, there is an uh, announcement by SciFi that there's a new Hi5 board with the P50 cores. This is go probably going to be something, um, the next best thing, but probably quite expensive. Uh, but other vendors should also bring boards. I think Mog 5s, uh, SciP might also bring cheaper boards in the market, the same chip. Then we have Oasis. Oasis, um, uh, they did the whole development publicly. Uh, they changed the spec maybe three times or four, maybe three times before tape out. Uh, I think uh, we're about to tape out the whole chip and they still plan to bring a product in Q4 with a 16 core P650, 70, and that's uh, out of order core, um, a lot more performance, including a bunch of uh, ICE extensions like vectors, hypervisors, and a bunch of more memory. So it, it supports up to 128 gigabytes of memory. They, it might be L, LP Cam 2, it might not be. It's a bit undecided. There is a uh, milk file also is teasing Jupyter. We don't know exactly what that is. They basically, you know, posting pictures on Reddit on X uh, that there is like, you know, a board. And then um, there is this uh, milk file pioneer which runs on uh, SG2022, it's a 64 core uh, silicon. It has issues at some point is the fastest machine you have, at some points is the slowest machine you have. Um, but there is a refresh coming in for the chip. We don't know the details, but hopefully there's gonna be a new board with that. And of course, there's a Star 5. Um, the interesting bit about it is that it has been upstreaming Upstreaming happens like for eight months, but there's no product, no details about SOC, no details about the, the board, but upstreaming is ongoing. So in the next six or more months, there's gonna be more hardware to play. None of this hardware is compatible with the server specs that will be ratified. So if you expect to have something like that, you might wanna wait even longer. Um, and now it's Richard. Okay, thanks David. So I'm Richard Jones and um, I've been working on this for quite a while. I wanted to talk a bit more about the landscape that we're working in, the other organizations that Red Hat and Fedora deal with. And the most important one is RIS5 International, I'm going to call them RVI. Um, they are the foundation that controls the, you can think of them as controlling the hardware and the platform layer. So they um, have many members. Red Hat is not a member directly. We're actually a member through our, um, through being owned by IBM. So IBM is the member. It doesn't practically make any difference. Um, if individuals here wish to become individual members of RVI, it's actually free. You can just sign up. Um, and that gets you access to 73 different profile groups covering, as you can see, everything you can possibly imagine and even stuff that you couldn't imagine, really. Um, we only really cover a few things. I'm going to talk about profiles a little bit later on. I mean, other ones we're interested in here would be something like hypervisors, maybe. Um, and then there's a somewhere can't find it now, but there's, there's, a, there's a server, like a Unix platform stuff, and Vector is interesting as well. So, yes, RVI. Now, RVI, as I say, covers the hardware aspect. There's also recently, actually, a, a second group that we are working with, and this is called RISE, the RISC-V software ecosystem. We are one of the original members, there's now 22 members, but we were one of the original ones. Uh, we, Red Hat, contributes two full-time engineer equivalents to, to RISE. Um, as you can see, probably what it says there, but RISE is basically dealing more with the, the software layer, the interaction with Linux distributions, of course, and with other operating systems. You can see some of the, um, I think these are called technical steering committees uh, that existed at the time when I took this screenshot off their website. Um, there may be more now. 
Um, but basically, yeah, they're dealing with, um, as an example of RISE, they're dealing with like GCC optimization work is, is one of the projects that we're working with them on. So I wanted to go back to RVI, the RISC-5 International. One group we're very interested in is profiles. Now, if you look at the uh, talk on the DevConf website, you will see um, that this talk on the DevConf website, you'll see I linked to a paper I wrote about RISC-V extensions. I'm not gonna talk about what these are in detail, but basically RISC-V is this extensible architecture with hundreds of different possible extensions to the, to the instruction set. Now, because just dealing with hundreds of extensions is, would be an absolute nightmare, um, these are grouped into sort of groups of extensions which are felt to be necessary to go together, for example, to construct a Unix server or something, uh, or, or to construct an, an automotive or embedded system or something like that. And these are called profiles. So the profiles group is very important to us. Um, the profile that is not actually ratified, I thought it was, but I don't think it is. Or it's maybe, uh, it's got some review period or something, but this is RVA 23. So that's the, that's the profile that we've been working on for the past year. It contains all of those extensions, plus like a whole bunch of others. You can go and have a look and download it. As, as with all these specs, they're all open source and available. This is very important to us because it's, looking more like a high-end server. The, the old hardware that we had lacked all of these features, particularly things like vectors and hypervisors, which we think are pretty important if you're gonna build a server, right? Um, and one of, the, one of the issues we have here is, do we move, say, Fedora and say, okay, to use Fedora, you're gonna to have to use RVA 23 hardware. I mean, we could do that, but the problem with that is, of course, none of the existing hardware supports it, so you'd have to throw all, all your existing hardware and Fedora would not actually run on anything at all. Um, so that wouldn't be great. But on the other hand, if we don't do that, then we're probably dropping some performance on the floor. It'd be nice, for example, if we could assume vectors and compile our software just to assume vectors. In the same way that on x86, you're just using, say, AVX or SSE 2 or something like that. Um, you just assume it's there and you get the performance benefits. At the moment, we're not really sure exactly how to resolve this. We're just essentially waiting for the hardware to become available, first of all, seeing if it's compelling and cheap and widespread enough. We don't want to, for Fedora, we don't want to exclude people using the cheapest possible SBCs because those will be super common and, and you, know, you don't want to get rid of those users. For CentOS Stream, which I'm going to talk about in a second, the, the, uh, the balance may be slightly different. Again, though, we're not sure. So after RVA 23, what comes next? Well, we don't know. Um, we don't know what it will be called because they're going to change the naming convention because they don't like putting years into the things because they think it will, it will date them too quickly. Uh, we don't know what's in it because that's, what we're being, that's what's being discussed. And we don't know when, it's, when it'll be released. It'd be nice if it was released in 2024, but going by the way that it's now 2024 and RVA 23 hasn't been released, I wouldn't necessarily bet on that. Okay, CentOS Stream 10, a subject dear to my heart. Now, David mentioned before that we did, or we do, unfortunately, still have a few downstream changes. We've been working really, really hard to get those you know, changes that need to go into upstream software, get those upstream. Changes that have to go into Fedora diskit, like changes to spec files, we've been working very hard to put those in. And we're, you know, we're doing okay. We could do better there, but we're getting there. At some point in Fedora Rawhide, we're gonna have to say, you know, no more downstream changes. You're gonna have to use, you're gonna have to make sure all the changes are in diskit or upstream and it'll just become more like a regular Fedora architecture when we do that. Um, now down here, CentOS Stream 10 on like x86 and stuff was forked from Fedora 40 a few months ago. Unfortunately, we kind of missed a lot of this work. And so what I've been doing in the past few weeks is I've been taking the changes here, getting them upstream, getting them into Diskit, but also getting those changes and actually putting them into CentOS Stream 10 
Luckily, CentOS Stream 10, I mean, Fedora Rawhide is 24,000 packages. CentOS Stream 10 is, oh, I have the number somewhere. What was it? Now I've got the exact, the exact number, 2,389. So, yeah, 2,389, so it's like a, a tenth of the size. So that means that the actual number of packages that need to be changed is not too many. It's probably 40 to 50. I have did about 30 in the past few weeks, but of course I did all the easy ones, so I've got the 20 hardest ones to do next. Now, Koji. Uh, Koji is what we use in Fedora to build packages. Um, and for various reasons that are complicated and we shouldn't really go into, we actually have two Koji instances running at the moment. We are going to replace both of those with one Koji instance, which will be running in the Fedora data center in the US. And the great advantage there is that that will be tied to the Fedora account system. And what that will mean is that if you are a Fedora packager, you will be able to submit a real build or a scratch build on RISC V through Koji. This is going to happen in probably a month or two, so it's pretty good. Um, it probably will also, uh, the, the details here are a bit sketchy, but it will probably also pick up packages that are built in regular Koji and rebuild them for RISC V. So it's important to say that RISC V won't be an architecture that appears in regular Koji. This will be another Koji off to the side. It will pick up packages and rebuild them. If they don't build, we'll sort of poke around and try and fix them. You can also submit your own packages directly to be built there if you want. And it, importantly, if you don't care at all about RISC V, it won't block you in any way. It won't be something that will gate your packages or anything like that, which we wouldn't want, you to, we wouldn't want to impose that on you at the moment because the hardware is just too slow um, for, for it to be, um, you know, for, it, for you to suffer that, basically. Um, so that new Koji instance will be, I, I say, yeah, a month or two, I think. And I did have one thing to say about the traffic one. Yeah, not blocking. And then finally, this is more of a question than a statement. Will RISC V ever be a primary Fedora architecture? So not in the immediate future, because the hardware, as I said, is just too slow, not available enough, all that sort of stuff. I mean. I did a whole bunch of benchmarking at the end of last year, and to give you a sort of general number, single thread performance is about four times slower than we really want it to be on currently available hardware that you can actually go and buy and, and use. So it needs to be four times faster before we can use it. We also tested Kermu. Kermu is actually worse than, than the real hardware, so um, that's like Kermu running on x86 emulating RISC V. So neither of those is really a good solution. We don't want to impose it on Fedora um, packages at the moment. When the hardware becomes available, when it's rackable, when we can put it in the data center, when it's fast enough, that's what we're aiming for. But at the moment, we're not quite there yet. And I don't really want to give an exact number for this. But as soon as it's, as soon as it's you know, possible, I want to submit a change request to make this happen. So. Questions and also links. Hey. So you mentioned how uh, does that have to do with the number of packages that you can use? Is it like in the past where you really had to make a effort on every single host, or is it quite true? So the question was, uh, you know, how bad are our sort of downstream? changes that we've, we, we're, we're, we are maintaining some for some packages um, apart from Fedora Diskit. Um, so it's not bad. Firstly, we are really trying to get them into Diskit very hard. And we should, I mean, we should really finish that in not, you know, not too distant future. Um, there are some packages where support is missing. The one I can think of is Valgrind. Lib audit. Lib audit. So there are, there are some packages where we're just missing RISC V support. The Valgrind one has been a problem because lots of packages just build required Valgrind devel. And we've had to go through dozens and dozens of packages doing an if arch Valgrind arches build required Valgrind devel. It's like a very mechanical change, but it's, it's affected tons of packages. Um, 
There are downstream patches of Valgrind, aren't there? But they're not upstream. Someone needs, well, yeah. someone needs to review them. The yeah. patches they're in. The, so the, I would say the big changes are things like we we don't have good we don't have great support in some languages, including GCC for RISC V. You know, the RISC V support is for things like vectors is kind of slow. If you look at a language like OCaml, obviously dear to my heart, it uses compressed instructions, which is a sort of a, one of the extensions for RISC V, but it doesn't use them very efficiently. So somebody's got to go in there and make that better and make it faster. Um, you know, I can't think of any, apart from Valgrind and LibOrder, I can't think of any sort of major area where we're totally missing stuff. We don't really have hypervisor support yet. Um, we have hypervisor upstream, but we don't have hardware, so it's not really been battle tested, and that's going to be a, a big thing. So, any more questions? Oh, so so the question was, if you're running on RISC five, can you can you query the uh, what extensions are available and the answer is yes there is a system call called hw probe i think which is supposedly the official way to get the list of extensions that's supported on the architecture hw probe yeah. there's a question at the back there So the question is, do we have a board or in general maybe a target that supports your five firmware um, and we don't need to repeat like ARM stuff? Um, the answer is yes, kind of. So if you install Fedora 40 images today, if you go to the wiki page and look at instructions, there's going to be libvirt instructions and those instructions will be with Tiano Core DK firmware. You're going to direct boot the kernel because there's no bootloader. Um, and that's what the Anaconda does in Image Factory. So I, I did that, so it works. It fails in a different way later on, but that part works, Anaconda runs, does installation, generates an image, you know, it writes it out, that part works. I think the question was also, do we have U, like good UEFI? Oh, in the hardware, uh, for physical hardware, so there's a, vision, a Starfire Vision 5 V2 board, it does have Tiano Core port. There's a pull request upstream, but no one has been looking at it for like months. Um, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the question is, what does SMBIAS do doing in RISC five? Well, my answer would be all good, boring systems. You know, RISC V is going to be the same way as AR64. That means the same way as x86. So if you have a server, it's an old, good, boring server. It has ACPI, SMBIAS, you know, all good stuff, basically. Yeah, that, I mean, that's important to say. So we're trying to make RISC V as close as possible to x86 in the way that it works. Now that's different from what RVI, RVI's vision, I would think that's fair, but that's our vision. We want it to be as boring and dull as possible. And differences, you know, the, the aim is, if there's a difference from x86, then that's probably a bug that, would be that should be corrected. All right, I think that's it. I don't see anyone else, so thanks for listening, everyone. <laughs>